people all across the nation have been uh, coming together, have been working together, have been thinking of different ways to start businesses, to uh, advance us as a culture. So we wanted to make sure that on this episode that we highlighted entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just ways that we can better not only further our culture, but further us as a people. And we have to be responsible for our own families and our community. So we wanted to definitely thank Kevin for being on the show today. He is a uh, well-versed entrepreneur. Yeah, yep. He's been an entrepreneur ever since I've met him, and that was 10, 10 years maybe 15. Ago. Yeah, uh, so, so wow. he's been an entrepreneur for a while. So again, we want to thank you for coming hey, on the show, sir. We definitely appreciate you. I'm glad to he's be, be here. Simone's tight, baby. <laughs> 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 be Simone, be Simone, hit my nine, man. No nine to five. Hey, Sam, no nine to five. Entrepreneurial mindset. <laughs> Jesus. That's all we know. <laughs> <laughs> so to start the interview, uh, first question we wanted to ask you today, sir, is yes. how long have you been an entrepreneur and uh, what led you down that path to becoming a business owner? Man, I, I have a problem with authority. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Off time. <laughs> <laughs> and nah, it's fine. I've been fired from every job I've ever held. Even mm. the ones I tried to quit. <laughs> they find a reason to fire me. Before you first. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I get I got tired of uh people talking at me instead of talking to me. Mm. And you know, I'm I'm a very respectable dude. But if I gotta get disrespectful, I can also disrespect you professionally to mm. where you can't fire me for what I just said. Mm. So they look for other reasons to get rid of me, but I ain't, I ain't want to be at them jobs anyway. So yeah. uh, the other thing that sort of pushed me in this direction is I caught a crazy case when I was 21. Okay. You know, um, I got caught up in a uh, accessory to a double homicide case. Oh, shit. Wow. And, and yeah, time. it was bad. You know what I mean? It hit real close to home because it dealt with some uh, friends and family. And at the time, it was around the time as like the Lacey Peterson case stuff was going on, mm. so it, uh, it was a lot of politics involved at that time. So long story short, they gave me the double homicide charges because mm. the person that did it was underage. By the time they decided to charge him as an adult, mm. then the damage to you me already had eligible. already been done. Mm. Wow. I was receiving threats. My family was receiving threats. When we went to court, the whole courtroom was filled with just my family and the victims. Mm. Like, it was crazy. <clears throat> but, uh, so they ended up giving me accessory to a felony after the fact, because really, I wasn't around when it actually happened. I was there afterwards. Mm -hmm. at right place, wrong time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, trash. yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, the system is crazy. And they, when you go through stuff like that, um, I got arrested, actually, on, on kind of similar circumstances, uh -huh. right? So it kind of forced me to do what I do. But, um, I guess what, did you experience them charging you on your record? Before I didn't have a record yeah. before that. Right. No, I'm just saying. Right. Did they this, did it show up as a charge or like a pending charge against you and it made you ineligible for unemployment? Uh, employment so so the felony. So they they end up sending me. I did a little bit of prison time, and which pe most people are shocked about because mm -hmm. I don't look like the prison type. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the way I carry myself, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the. I don't get into trouble like that. So. The jobs that I was qualified for, mm -hmm. I could no longer get Facts. due to my felonies. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a bad situation, but I believe in every bad situation, there's always a, there's a fine line to, to step over to right. turn it into something better right. if you know how to. Right. You know, right. And, right. and a lot of this is, is thought process. How do you turn something bad into something good? Right. Right. right? So what this did was it forced me to do what I needed to do anyway, which is just be my own man. Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I'm a self-taught graphic designer. Mm -hmm. I went back and got my degree because they said you either had to go to work or go to school mm -hmm. uh, while you're on parole. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the time, y'all remember the unemployment guy? Yep. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. At the time, there was no jobs in there. It was all school stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. That's cool. That's it. <laughs> you to make any money. So um, I went. I came real close to becoming a drug and alcohol counselor just because I enjoy helping people. Mm -hmm. um, but when I went to the art school, I just it felt like a breath of fresh air. I felt like this is, this is where I belong. Nice. You know, and because I was already doing my own thing, everything that I was learning at the school, I was just, just applying right. to what I was already currently doing. Right, right. You know, and just... 
mm. been moving forward ever since. I, I try to That's preach dope, entrepreneurism bro. to other people because we need to, even if we're working for somebody else, we still got to have more of our own. That's true. Man. That's I mean, and we don't have enough of that. And we got enough leaders, but everybody's not coming together because uh, everybody still moves in different circles. Right. You know what I mean? And we were just talking about that just a second ago about yeah. the environment and how you get placed in certain things. I, I relate to, I, I love stories like that because I relate to a story like that. Because I, I was, Oh, so I relate. I relate to stories like that because mm -hmm. of uh, you know, I went. I, I experienced, you know, the same thing going to jail behind somebody else. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, and, and uh, I didn't get. To, I didn't. I never. I never. I didn't go to prison, mm -hmm. but um, they OR'd me. Right. And I fought this case for like two years, and even though I had never, I wasn't officially convicted of a crime. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Every time I applied for a job, I would get the job, mm -hmm. and then the background check would come back as if I. Because you were you were charged. Yeah, I was charged. Uh, I was charged before I was actually convicted. Right. Mm. We need to have a man. That's a, that's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. But that's a deep conversation. Though, yeah. Just right. how the system sets up so that way. Yeah. You know. I went. From, yeah. Well, the you know usually most people want the system to set up to rehabilitate, but usually when you get out, you're worse than what you were before you came in. Facts. And then it makes it more difficult for you to stay on the straight and narrow because. Now all these opportunities have been taken away from you. Right? Yeah, you know and I mean? but at the so, it was meant, at one time, to be able to help you transition. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, was it Tracy? Tracy was intake. That mm -hmm. was also where they were supposed to teach you um, trades. It mm -hmm. was a trade area. Mm -hmm. They shut all that stuff down. Mm -hmm. So, once these facilities, schools work the same way. Mm -hmm. Once they start becoming more about business, right. and less about the education, right. You'll start to see the decline. Right. The similarities between right. prison and or jails and school is retention rate. Yeah. Right. They're only funded by the amount of people that are physically, physically there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it, it, it really is. It's um, like I said, man. It's it's incredible to to hear all your accomplishments because you're not supposed to be accomplished. You yeah. Know what I'm, saying? I'm supposed to be a statistic for, for it's, sure. It's and that's that's is. how I feel with with my own with my own life. So I re I relate to that so much, bro. When, when they get you, you're supposed to be stuck. You're not supposed to be able to create wealth. And that's when we talk about systemic racism. So mm -hmm. it's, it's so, and systemic racism turns into economic hardship, which becomes economic racism. Mm -hmm. it's, because, yeah, it's, a, it's a whole line of things that go into that, but that's, it's just dope, bro. It's right. dope. So, so the question at that point is how do you beat the odds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you beat the odds of becoming a statistic? And in my opinion, the question to that is how bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we already got the decks. The the deck is stacked against us. So it's like, what type of person are you? What type of individual were you raised to be? You know, a lot of that also comes from parenting. Yeah, all right. You know, right, right. And right. I got kids. I'm teaching my kids to be entrepreneurs. Right. You know. Right. So they don't got to depend on nobody if they don't want to. Right. You get stuck and you're in a bad situation. How bad do you want to get out of that situation? And how hard are you willing to work for it? Right. right. I didn't want to go to prison. For me to have to do that, right, right? I was forced for something somebody else did. You know what I mean? And 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 we can leave that at that point. But it's like that just put more perspective in my life on what I needed to do for me. Because again, I got tired of getting fired. I was like, you know, what, screw this. I I started tapping in with other people mm -hmm. in my circles that were doing mm -hmm. entertainment stuff and business stuff. Yeah. And I've been uh, learning and self teaching the whole time. I mean, I can't remember the last time I actually had a job for myself and it's not easy it's still scary right because it's, yeah. it's not we don't as as entrepreneurs we don't have a safety net mm -hmm. so when people look at what we do mm -hmm. and we make it look so easy it only looks easy because this is part of our passion this is where our drive stems from so we're willing and okay with putting in the extra work mm -hmm. we dream about what we do for work mm -hmm. how are we gonna make that next move mm -hmm. where's this mm -hmm. next money coming from mm -hmm. what, what's gonna be the next big thing and who can i get involved to make it even bigger Ooh. that's how my mind yeah, works that be some other mentality boy you know what i mean it that's is. what she talking about you eligible all right man so i know a lot of what you're can saying you hear me? is uh, oh yeah we can definitely hear you <laughs> um i know a lot of what you're saying is obviously getting in and making sure that you know half of that is that's you know hard, is bro. that passion and, and it's and it's that drive so once you you know decided on what you wanted to do, uh, can you give us some insight on the process of starting your first business and how difficult or easy was that process for you? 
the first thing I did for business or as a business service was flyers. Um, I used to draw when I was a little kid, starting off like Ninja Turtles, Sonic, Simpsons, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I found a program back then was called a uh, print shop, which would teach you how to create business cards and that. all that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I moved from print shop, saw Photoshop, and was like, okay, this this is the next level stuff. Let me start teaching myself that. So, like, I didn't go to get my degree until 2008, 2008. Mm -hmm. And uh, even at that point, I was already well-versed at what I do. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed about the schools is they only teach you just enough. Mm -hmm. Just enough to, to put you through. And... I would say 85% of the people that were going to the school are not doing what they went to school for. That's in they were they were just looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. But again, this is still a business. This is debt mm -hmm. you're incurring. This is mm -hmm. money you got to put out there. So it's like, mm -hmm. no matter what you want to do. You know what I mean? I, I, I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, actually quite a few people. I'm like, what do you want to do with your life? Right. You'd be surprised how many people have no answer. Right? Do they even ask kids in school anymore? What do you want to be when you grow up? Right? It doesn't matter what they want to be, man. The the I think the way the school is set up now is to teach you to get a nine to five so you can make the rich more rich. Right. Yeah. And and most most people will fit into that category, right? So they say it's like the the one percent. There's mm -hmm. the one percent that what makes a what's the eighty twenty rule? Yep. Uh, yeah. no, it's like one percent for like ninety-two percent of the income of the, of the the money made. It's, it's, it's something super ridiculous. Right. Or eighty percent. Eighty percent of people make twenty percent of the oh, money. Twenty percent of income. Twenty percent of people make eighty percent of the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So the eighty percent of the people are the nine fivers. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the ones that are comfortable with where they're at, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. They're worker bees, and I don't mean to say it like that, but it's what they are. But they're right. okay with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you got other people that are willing to go against the grain to yep. push the line to, right. to kick those doors down right you know and those are the entrepreneurs those are yep. the people that are making ways for other people to walk yep. in and to walk through mm -hmm. and that that's very important for us and that's why i try to to teach that to other people and to preach that and to like i only want my circle my personal circle to be those of like-minded individuals, mm -hmm. those that are entrepreneurs and business owners, and the entrepreneur part is not necessarily the business owner, but it's the is the is the free business mind, mm -hmm. meaning you're ready to go out and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. The business license and stuff that that's just paperwork. That's right. that's mm -hmm. just whatever. Right. You know what I mean, right, it's right. helpful in certain situations, but where's your mind at? Do you want more for yourself, and are you going to build something for your children to be able to grow into? Right. Because they watch everything we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But. So, um, a lot of what you just kind of said just now just makes me think. So, you know, obviously, just like you said, with the paperwork, all that's just following the steps and getting everything legit. So, internally, because like, a lot of it is kind of fighting yourself, right? Fighting right. mentality, fighting the status quo, fighting... You, uh, you want to beat the odds is what it is. So, right. again, how bad do you want it? Because right. it's not an easy task. People see us making money, mm -hmm. like, oh, man, put me on. What mm -hmm. do I got to do? You know, I, I had a dude ask me one day. He's like, man, I thought we were supposed to be partners. I was like, I would love mm -hmm. to be partners. But how do you expect to make what I make if you don't put in? The you want to be 50-50? That means 50-50 to effort, 50-50 right. to work, 50-50 right. at the finances. Meet me halfway because at that point, we're not – splitting 50 50 of of yep. what's coming in right. we're building right on top of that so it's like we take my hundred and your hundred mm -hmm. you know what i mean and we do more right not split less that's right. how we built this right yeah, yeah. we went four ways 25 percent. i mean and every dime invested in here was equal shares mm -hmm. all the effort i mean we're all here we're, we're at all the meetings it, it is what it is man people I find that when you're already established, mm -hmm. people want to jump on the they want to jump on the boat and they want to take a ride because they don't know how to establish themselves. But it's yes. it's not a bad thing. You again, we need worker bees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, we need people that just want to say, "Tell me what to do," mm -hmm. because we can't do everything ourselves. Yes. Yeah, you know I mean, there's there's so many things I'm doing. You just listed just a few of the things I do. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, and I could be so much further if I had 
people like more people like myself Facts. to do what I do instead of me doing everything. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is people are so used to the quality that I personally provide that if it's not me, they don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So now I got to find a team to teach how to do what I do, do. Mm -hmm. so I can delegate and then go get us some more money. Because mm -hmm. hmm. everybody can, everybody's got to eat and there's enough money for everybody to eat. There's money in sack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entertainment may not be the best, right? but there's money in sack. Right. You just got to know how to go get it. Right. So would you say not being able to duplicate yourself has hindered your forward thinking? Oh, yeah. No, not my thinking. Not my thinking. Yeah, and when I say forward thinking, I mean as far as being able to to leave your not leave, but being able to let your business run itself and then go on to a bigger right plan. So right. what? So what? What? Where do you want to be at, and how has that hindered your expanding your business and your? When I say forward thinking, obviously mm -hmm. moving on to the next thing. Right. So it's being able to put people in place. As I move up, somebody's got to be ready to move into my position. That's that's that would be your protege, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I got a gentleman that works with me doing photography um, when we do the event stuff, and he's been branching off and doing his own thing as well, uh, Mad Optics, and he works with me at Urban Tech Media, and he's basically he's he he found he found his niche, mm -hmm. he jumped on it, and he is creating his own way. When when we go to the club. Because he's bald too, <laughs> so, no hair, don't care. You feel? No me? hair, don't <laughs> care. But, but in the dark, in the dark, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's looking for swag. Swag does the photos. Where swag at? Where swag yeah, at? Yeah. Couple times if the ladies was drunk enough, they would think. He, I said, bro, just tell them you me. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> tell them you me. It's all right. I said, but the more you come out here with me, they gonna stop asking for swag. They gonna be looking for you too. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. I don't. I don't. I'm not selfish. Right. Like I, I have so no problem with sharing it's, it's a spotlight. It's a rare mentality, man, to to have somebody who has something built that's not selfish. Mm -hmm. So here's my next question, mm -hmm. because as a person who's built um, businesses, I, I I'm a nine to fiver, mm -hmm. right? And so this is gonna take us into a lot of other conversations. But I'm a nine to fiver that kind of built my businesses. Um, you're still a nine to fiver? Yeah, bro. Can I ask you one question before yeah. you continue? Yeah. Why are you still a nine to fiver? Why? Why? Because I used, I've sourced all that income mm -hmm. to to purchase all my real estate. That is a good answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm 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 four homes in in 34 years. So so with that, and I don't mean to cut you off, but the reason why that's a, a good thing in your in your where you stand because the fact that you can do both mm -hmm. and that's even harder mm -hmm. to be able to work your regular nine to five and still be an entrepreneur because as an entrepreneur there is no days off mm -hmm. none you know what i mean none. and if you really really want it you're going to take what you have in place and he's continuing to build his foundation well, that's, that's each of us each of us each of us have nine to fives mm -hmm. but i think that i think where people miss is like uh, like like you said, and I'm not I'm not saying we work harder than other people, but, but we have but you do. we have the regular things, and then mm -hmm. we still have to build this every day. That's why you right? work harder. And then he has he has she has her own Steph.net has her own company she's building, mm -hmm. and G Focus has his own, and Photo B has his own mm -hmm. company, right? And so, my question was, uh, how do, how long do you work with someone, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to impart into someone what you do. Because I, I wrote this on, on Facebook not too long ago, but I was like, how long do you wait before you cut someone off? If they're if, if you want if they come to you and they ask for help, mm -hmm. right? Like how what what is your turnaround time on? Because I think I struggle with that myself. What's mm -hmm. my turnaround time in saying, yo, this relationship doesn't work? It's time to move on. When it stops working, like mm -hmm. immediate immediately. When it's so for me. I'm still looking at the bigger picture, my bigger picture first, Facts. before I look at somebody else's bigger picture. And my bigger picture takes more than just myself to stay alive, mm -hmm. because the things I try to create are bigger than me. So having the right group of people, the right team working with you, what I want is those that want it the same way that I want it, because I found an idea that's going to work. I always do. Now, who wants to win with me? Right. Right. Now, if you want to win on your own, I'm not mad at that. I've had a couple of people that will start with me mm -hmm. and try to branch off and do their own thing. 
So right? Try. No, I, <laughs> I peeped that. <laughs> I did peep that. <laughs> so, so, it nine times out of ten it doesn't work. Right. One, I put in the time. Facts. My my name when you know, swag FX swag call me swaggy depending on who you talking to, like I've been doing it for a while. Right. So I may not be in everybody's face consistently, but my name is consistently mm-hmm. out there moving. My reputation speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and I think uh, out of everybody I've worked with in the past, even for a short time, very few people have actually branched off to do their own thing and have been successful and continue to build um photo b would be one of them you know what i mean i met him a very long time ago when i was working with an artist young dizzy which is around the time i had met you mm-hmm. oh yeah and me that thing. Yeah. yeah and my mm-hmm. thing is putting people together right because it's 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 just they're big projects you know what i mean and uh that's a foreign huh yeah <laughs> With photo B, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I was a little irritated for a short period of time with you, but I'm gonna explain. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. explain. So, I take pride in trying to put people on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to see us all win. Right. You know what I mean? So if I'm, it's it's like if I'm building a house for us to live in, and you want to come help me build, or you just need a room, it's like okay, everybody do they part. Right. And then um. What everybody I've dealt with has always been a money thing, mm. right? People want to make time. people want to make mm. more money, mm-hmm. which is completely understandable. Mm-hmm. And again, from my personal perspective, is I'm putting in most of the work, so this is what I'm taking. But I make sure everybody makes money. Mm-hmm. Um, I was told by somebody else, I will not speak any names, but somebody else had made a statement that you said, "Why should I help Swag make money when I should be making my own?" Right? Do you remember? So, I got agitated because I'm like, what the hell? I'm just trying to put people on. Yeah. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Let's get it together. But I had to stop being mad because BJ's mentality is similar to my own. Right. Yeah. And I can't be mad that you have what it takes to push yourself and your own brand when you're good at it. Right. If you sucked, we'd all be mad at you. Right. <laughs> if I sucked, I wouldn't be. <laughs> right? These are facts. So, if you sucked, you can't hang out with right. us. <laughs> so, so for a minute, you know what I'm saying, I was agitated because you are very skilled at what you do. Appreciate it. You know what I mean? So I will never hate on that. And I had to tell people when I would get into arguments about yeah. that, I'd be like, you know, he's extremely talented. Yeah, yeah. He just irritated the hell out of me. But he's good at what he does. Mm-hmm. And at a time... I felt like your way of thinking at that moment compared to what I was thinking and why I was trying to get you involved. Mm. I'm like, you know, he's still a kid. He's still learning. Mm-hmm. But he's so damn talented. Man, you get that excuse a lot, bro. I hate, man, yeah. what, I'm Photo B gets that. He's young. He's just a young oh, man. He's young? Oh. so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a lifeline. Yeah. For him, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but that's what it was. But you can only say that when... One, you're older. Yeah. And two, you've, you 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 think a little different because you've been through a little more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you're going through your own journey. You know what I'm saying? He's doing his own thing. And from where he is now, based on where he was, mm-hmm. you know, and I had a conversation with him in, in Walmart not too long ago. Yeah. And it's like, he's he, he's he likes what he does. We all like what we do, but we still have a preference, right? Yeah. We have a preference on where we would want to be and how we want to move. Right. So I had to stop being mad at you because I was like, okay, now, now you go from, from working for me or with me to working for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I still say working with me because the more entrepreneurs we have that are solid in their position, the better of a network we create as a whole when we're trying to build, right? I'm working on a project right now. It's called the Urban Empire. And I think I was talking to you, yeah. DJ, about that. And it's something that's definitely needed so bad right now and wanted. And it's a minority business directory online. Dope. The way this will be set up is it's your it tech will... tech company? Was that? This part of your tech company? Part of it. Nice. Um, I, I'm thinking of the bigger... I'm thinking of the bigger picture. Yeah. yeah. How do I make money in my sleep? 
I'm not a racist dude, but I will say, how do I make money like these white folks make money? These corporate white folks. That's real. You know what I mean? Come on. I'm, I'm trying to learn. Because as black folks, we are very smart. We are very capable. But we don't always have the confidence in ourselves that we need because we've been beat down for so long. And, and part of that beat down is ourselves. We're doing it to ourselves. It's like, okay, we have to start uplifting more. So... Somebody had told me there's over, somebody works for the states that is over 8,000 black owned businesses here in Sacramento. I was like, you mean like 800? Nah, 8,000. I said, that's crazy. Mm. I said, that tells me that one, it's a problem because we don't know. We don't even know. We don't know it. Yes. And two, we don't know where to look. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of small businesses that I talked to, they don't want to get into advertising and marketing because they're like, oh, no, we do fine. We're just, you know, word of mouth and we'd be good. The problem with word of mouth is it normally only goes as far as that person's circle. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And area, your mm -hmm. environment. That's true. Mm -hmm. So there's stuff going on in the north that people in the south don't know about and vice versa. All the time, yeah. Right? right. But when you look at a place like the mall, mm -hmm. you know, you can go to the mall. There's 100 stores in there you know if there's something new, you can still go figure it out because you know yeah. where to go. Mm -hmm. So we have to take that same concept. So with this, I want different cultures because if it's like that for the black community, what about these other minority communities? How many businesses do they have throughout the town that nobody knows about? Man, that's crazy. 8,000 is, is right. incredible. I could only name, you know, you think about the how many you can name and then you say 8,000, like, right. where? But can't name them, right? Can't name them. We don't, we don't know where to look. There are some black directories out there mm -hmm. but they're still so small they're not extensive right? and yeah. they're not they're not marketed correctly they look like government websites who wants to be on a government Nobody. website Nobody. longer than they have to be you know what I mean <laughs> black business that presentation is right. everything we talk it about is. that all the time and, and being black bro that should be our number one thing is presentation bro we, if we do, if we can't make it look good nobody has. but we're full of too many too many shortcuts yeah. We cut too many corners. You know what I mean? For for black business, we would love to do more black business. But we're cautious because we're trying to hustle each other. We're trying to talk each other down on our prices. We don't trust somebody because we feel like they're just trying to get over. Um, I mean, it's, it's a number of different things that we've instilled into ourselves because we we're taught to survive, mm -hmm. not to work together. So on on that point, because I want to let photo photo B hop in, because I know we that's kind of what we were talking about just now as far as building, and obviously when you know you kind of have that Kobe Bryant Mamba mentality, I'm gonna go get it on my own. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I wanted you to speak to that conversation that we had probably about five minutes ago mm -hmm. about. The exchange he, you guys he's speaking see. to the mic, sir. Oh, I can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wanted to give you the floor to respond to just that exchange, your mentality, um, and how maybe things are now. Because I think that's an important conversation mm -hmm. to 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 the the thin line between building together and then branching out and building your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Um, when I was definitely when I was younger, I was there was a few people, including Swag, that I was working with, um, two other photographers um, that I was doing work with, and I started becoming the the little bro. You know, I was working with people I was looking up to and all that, and you know, I just felt like I was putting in a lot of work, and I was like, you know, me, you know, get some bread. There was another photographer, not Swag, that I was doing work with, to where I would do something for an event, and he'll dip off, and then come back. And then still only give me like a little bit, mm -hmm. so it was like kind of around that time where I was like, I like I'm I'm getting the short end of the stick, but I'm right. still pushing. I'm pushing the most work. I'm putting all the work that I'm doing. I'm like, all right, let me just focus on you know doing what I gotta do. Right. Um, you know, it makes sense. You know what I mean? To you know to work with people when you gotta work with people. Um, and then when it comes down to you know trying to do more work, uh, you know I just want to make sure I do you know mine. And then definitely works when it comes to like getting more people involved uh because that's how you build mm -hmm. it's a fact that's how you build so my question is and i mean everybody can hop in steph or whoever 
and this is not an indictment on you because I totally get that, mm. right? Because there's some people who will abuse that. That's a disclaimer. Go ahead. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they, will they will. They will abuse that by saying, yeah. "Oh, we're building together," but really, you're building their empire. Facts. And then they don't give you anything. You know what Facts. I mean? Facts. But like what Swag is saying, he's trying to build so that way everybody can eat. So there's a difference. But why is why do we as black people, and obviously because we're all black here in business, do we treat black businesses as pyramid schemes? But with other races or other ethnicities, we don't do that. You know, you know what it is? It's a it's a minimalistic thinking, right? It's 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 hard to it's hard for black people to envision anything that is not already established in totality. We don't like to go through the process of growing things, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's why black businesses are so hard to find and so hard to work for. That's why, right? If it's easier to work for Popeyes and make minimum wage because Popeyes is established. You can see their commercials, you can see their, so instead of going in there and negotiating a wage like you could in a business partnership, mm-hmm. you go in there and you're like, I'll take this $12 or $13 an hour that you're telling me. Bro, that's the whole thing about being an employee and, and being good at what you're supposed to do. Swag can tell you what it costs to work with him, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And when I'm producing records, right, because I've done all the things I've done, I can tell you what it's gonna cost you to work with me. And mm-hmm. in the same with Photo B. But I think for us, we are so superstitious about working with us at a lower level that we can't, we don't give each other enough credit, bro. So I think that black people generally fumble the ball when it's something that to you was not a big deal because you didn't put in the work that Swag put in or Photo B put in. So you don't value it the same. Right. As as a as a franchise, like you said with the mall, mm-hmm. you know the mall is established. You never walk into you never walk into Nike and you're like, yo, I don't want to pay two hundred twenty five for these ones. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think you should give them to me for one sixty. Mm-hmm. But it's already established in your head that yo, this is the value of these shoes. As right. opposed to when it comes to black people, right? You're like, yo, I know you didn't really pay two twenty five for them. So why don't you... It's like, you want to get it for my price. No. It's not right. happening. You didn't put in the work. You didn't put in the, the ground, the foundation. Right. Right? right. That's the benefit of being an entrepreneur is finding out those um, those paths to get things at a wholesale and then retelling it out. You know what I mean? So do we think... And I'll let Steph answer this. God knows she, she has been involved in a lot of black businesses and mm-hmm. purchasing and marketing. Mm-hmm. Do we think that white supremacy plays a part in how we view our brothers and sisters that are in business. And when I when yes. I what I ask that is the reason why I ask that is because like what Rajo just said, if I view you, my sister, as in the same bucket I'm in, when you try to sell me something, I'm automatically thinking, we're on the same level. You're trying to get over on me and whatever you're trying to sell me, like what he said, I know it don't cost that. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to profit off of me. In reverse, when we're thinking about somebody that, like, a white person or a Jewish or whatever, they already have a business, we already value their business because of the way that subconsciously we see them. Mm -hmm. We see that they are superior or Mm -hmm. they're above us Mm -hmm. or they're not on the same level playing field. Can I cut in in real quick? Perfect. All right. So (laughs) um, when you know somebody, when you feel connected to them, there's a thing that goes off in your head that feels like, you know, I I probably don't have to pay the whole amount. Mm -hmm. Right, there's a plug. Because I know, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and, and a lot of people, but that's that's the, I see you shaking your face, but, (laughs) but. Just the face. (laughs) (laughs) Just the face. Just the face. (laughs) But it's like, you know, sometimes when I'm working on a project, if it's my project and it's a big project, I, there's people I will tell that no, I just I just work for the company. Why? Because they're looking to get the the hookup, and not just the hookup, like the the, the, the hookup. Hook yeah, yeah, they're like, bare hey, minimum. Uh, come you on, take man. twenty dollars on top of whatever look, you bought how, for. How far back we go? You know, <laughs> right? And it's like, bro, you don't do that to the white folks. You don't go Facts. to these corporate spots and and like you know how about check this out right when i'm in a club and we print pictures, i have a low overhead mm-hmm. for for printing photos right right four by six i charge five dollars mm-hmm. for four by six right other places it's at least 10 bucks right bare minimum 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 yeah why are you asking me to get two for five 
Right. Go home. <laughs> Straight, up. Straight up. I mean, and, and, and it's, it's offensive because, like you said, you've put in the time and put in the work. Bro, when I think we talked about this, man, when people inbox me and they're like, yo, can you shoot me some production? Mm-hmm. Right? I, and I've had people pay me thousands of dollars mm-hmm. for one record mm-hmm. and then pay me again to track it out. Mm-hmm. Right? I've been paid thousands of dollars for small, I'm not going to say small pieces of music, but. Um, the value of what other, like you said, of what other people see me, mainstream, or when I was, when I, let's just take the double XL. When I started doing the double XL freshman music, right? Mm-hmm. They were offering me almost $10,000 for a 30 second clip, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not saying everybody can afford that kind of mm-hmm. money, mm-hmm. right? But you have to understand that if I got here, then somebody values my There's a reason there's for a it. Reason. Well, there's, a, there's an established value. You know, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So in my head, all the records I want to do. Or I want to. I want to see 10k at that level or more. Yeah. Right. So because you're further establishing your wealth. Right. Correct. And, and, and how much you're actually worth. Right. Not your wealth, but your worth. And now there's also nothing wrong with bartering, right? We yeah. barter certain things mm-hmm. if there's a mutual understanding mm-hmm. and a mutual benefit. Yes. And there are some people that's not a barter. You might get the homie hookup, but you're not getting the. No. No. The, the, the cost. I mean, like, yeah. I mean majority of, of the time, like you said. There's, I'm already hooking you up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Again, like you said, it was 10 and I'm doing it for five. That's already a hookup. So you asking for a hookup on top of the hookup. Like my you. price is already a good. It's a sign of disrespect. Price. And they yeah. don't see it that way. Mm. Yeah. They yeah. don't, because everybody's just, and, and I'm not going to lie, I'm trying to get the deal too. Yeah. If I can like, get it and I'm good at getting the deal. <laughs> So I think what we need to know about what about um, black owned businesses, especially like a lot of the business I purchase from, you know, Mm -hmm. more so like hair products, beauty products, stuff like that. When black people go into business, they don't have the same resources as, Mm -hmm. you know, other communities have. So, you know, I know with the beauty community, like as far as like if you want to start a beauty supply store, Mm -hmm. all of the distributors Mm -hmm. are Asian. So they price gouge the black people. Mm-hmm. So they gonna give it to the hookup for their own people. Mm-hmm. But for us, they gonna sell that same thing they sold to them for two dollars for five dollars to you. So that means your price is gonna be higher than other people's prices. I feel like people don't look at that aspect of it. And mm-hmm. when they ask, well, why they ch- the, the black place be charging too much? They because they don't have that same resource. They still have to make a profit. When you don't understand the background, that's that's why that's why you're. The customers is like, oh no, this don't make any sense. You trying to get over? No, you don't understand what goes on behind the curtains. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. But that very reason right there, what you just stated, is more of a reason why in the black community we need to put ourselves, we need people in key places. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what I mean? So we can play on the same playing field mm-hmm. as 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 the people we trying to we competing with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so instead of you know what I'm saying, we we need we need to be able. We want the hair at that deal. You know what I mean? Okay, we got to bypass them. We need to go to the to supplier. Period. Right? Yeah. 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 You know, take out the middleman. Yeah. yeah. As or, or or come together, and if that's if they were willing to come down on the wholesale price, that maybe hey, I need a second or third partner, and we could buy more in bulk and work together. If we all own beauty supply stores, we all sell the same product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not us come together, buy it? together Mm -hmm. and we're gonna sell it anyway that's right but we're saving the money as a oh oh, here we go hold on no 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 no. (laughs) hold on hold on no i I agree with no i agree with what you're saying i'm saying the issue with that is that black people don't like working together because i feel like there's i feel like we feel like there's so little seats at the table that we we grab it for scraps so it's kind of like Dang, it's we we feel like there's not enough seats at the table as is. So it's like if we all go in together, that's less that I'm getting. You know why though? Because uh, you only see a piece of the con- table. Conditioning. You no, it is conditioning. Look, I'm not saying it's right, but, look, but that's what it is. You only see a piece of the table. Again, there's money out there for everybody. Bro, yes. Yeah. Right. So if you open up your eyes, if you really expand your vision and see that if you put people in place, right? One of the biggest things we're afraid of is competition. Yeah. Why? Because there's somebody that's always better, right? So the competition begins to be part of our downfall, mm-hmm. right? That's why we don't work together, Yeah. right? But if you change how you look, I always say if you change, change your thought process, change your life, right? Mm-hmm. So 
you could be my competition, not a problem. But for me, it's a healthy competition. Correct. Right? If I see you doing well, BJ, I look at your pictures, bro. Ridiculous. Appreciate In a good way. Ridiculous. Appreciate it. Right? You know, I don't you know who I used to look up to. Look, look, <laughs> look. But he was good. You've been, he's always been good. But when I see his work, mm-hmm. it gives me ideas. Right? So mm-hmm. it's like, damn, that's dope. I need to try something like that. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's dope. I need to try something. But he just keeps doing dope shit. I need to try. Can I say shit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can say whatever you want to say. <laughs> like, damn, let's get it together. <laughs> that's shit right. Now, can I say shit? Now he's got a conscience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is, even if there is competition, like, y'all do the same thing. Or, okay. Or, so, but, but he can't do what you do. And but listen, you can't do what he do. But listen, period. Yes and no. Listen. So... Healthy competition. Seeing how dope you are makes me want to be doper mm-hmm. than what I'm already doing. Mm-hmm. I taught a couple of people how to do graphics, mm-hmm. right? And I'll get phone calls. Man, I just seen what you just posted. Mm-hmm. It's dope. I said, I appreciate it. What you doing? I'm about to redo my flyer now. That's how it's I'm about to redo it. Step it up. You don't. You don't. You know what I mean? But that's that's what it is. So mm-hmm. if you change how you look at competition, we can all be great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what it's supposed to be between yeah. us, though. Right, but we like I used the word condition earlier, but we are conditioned to compete against one another as if it's the last piece of chicken. For that's the yes. survival. Right. That's for what I mean. Yes. For the last for the piece of chicken, right? Yeah. And and your idea when you said that the companies could come together, that's the very first thing I thought about before I even said you said yeah. it. Before I said it, yeah. when she was talking, and I was like, "All right, so how do we up our how do we up our purchase so we can lower the bulk lower price?" Because you have mm-hmm. to understand business enough to mm-hmm. understand that if we buy more, we mm-hmm. can buy it for less, better price, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Wholesale, right? So, but I think like you talked about schooling earlier. And even though you were just talking about design, but it goes for all education, Mm -hmm. right? There's no class for business marketing that you're until you get to college, Mm -hmm. right? There's no class for economics until you get to college. There's no class for like credit repair or how they, we are purposely Mm -hmm. left out of the loop Mm -hmm. so that we don't think like that. And other cultures, they are the generational, the legacy that you're talking about, Mm -hmm. it's passed down learning how to order in bulk, learning learning how to go to the source, learning how to grab the product, mm-hmm. learning who to go to. See, our generation right now, all those of us that were born in the 80s, mm-hmm. and, and some of us that were born in the 70s, we are really the first who generation. Who was born in the 70s? I don't know, not, not anybody not here. Anybody not anybody yeah, but, but, I was curious. I was, but I was, I was, I was <laughs> looking around. I was, included, I was trying to be inclusive. He said to be inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't want to, you didn't want to get cancer for yeah, ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ages. <laughs> <laughs> like I was trying to be inclusive. But those of us who were born in those two generations, we are really the first people that are of, of this mind, mm-hmm. right? Yes. We're the first people to talk about trauma on the level that we talk about. Mm-hmm. We're the first people to talk about business, credit. I mean, I think that's one of the cool things that I do a lot is I post credit repair tips. Mm-hmm. I'm posting stocks damn near every day. Now, look, now that was about to lead to my next question. What is our responsibility? Right. So because we're not taught these things and for those of us that are learning on our own mm-hmm. as we learn it, mm-hmm. it's reach one, teach one. We got to put mm-hmm. other people on. It is mm-hmm. our responsibility. Yes. To be the teachers. Yeah. It well, is. I mean, we me and him had a conversation Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were just talking about some of his business ideas. And then the podcast question came up. He's like, and you guys doing podcasts, how you guys make money normally? Oh, I'm not too sure. You don't have to, you know, find out on your own, Google, look it up. I said, this is how you make it. I said, because me withholding that information, does that benefit me? No. No. Because, and, and, and it's just like, and, and it's not and it's not in comparison to what this conversation is, but there's a Walmart on almost every single corner. Mm-hmm. They sell the same exact product. Different owners. But it's the same exact store mm-hmm. with the same exact product, with mm-hmm. the same exact placement the same exact layout mm-hmm. do they are they scared to open up multiple other no. more walmart because they think oh if i open up another walmart down the street that's going to cut sales from this other one no it's going to increase sales because more people are then going to keep coming to that store obviously with photography is different but i think i'm thinking opposite if somebody sees you doing pictures and sees bj doing pictures then Oh, somebody that may not want that may not have wanted to get into modeling may now want to get into modeling, and they're gonna say, "Oh man, modeling. that that picture modeling." 
don't y'all start. Such a, look, such a no, loose we, term these days. We're not going to look at them. But, <laughs> but, but, look at them right. but, but what I'm saying is, is that. Let me fix you. There's enough. <laughs> <laughs> to operating table. There's Over here, cat doctor, there's paging doctor <laughs> swag. <laughs> but 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 uh, to my to my to my point is that there's enough to go around, and there's always going to be somebody who wants their picture taken. Mm-hmm. For you to think that that person is so dope that they're going to take every single client. To me is is to me is crazy. Because Everybody's unique. I feel the same way about when I put out my hair videos. There's a million hair videos on the internet, right? But there's only one me. So one somebody's gonna want to see me do it. Yes. Somebody mm-hmm. might prefer my videos, my editing style, the way that I explain. They might mm-hmm. prefer that over the next person. Not to say I'm better than the next person, right. or the next person is better than me. You know, there's probably somebody that has <clears throat> way better quality. To, quality than me but somebody will still prefer right but i like much, her personality i like her how much confidence do you have in yourself is part of that question yes. right that's that's right. what it so, boils down to so so i use an, an uh, i think it's an analogy i use an analogy um that sort of caters to that concept so I mean, i'm a graphic designer right i try to design with a wow factor mm-hmm. you got to stand out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right everything is so uh, Everybody's doing everything right now, especially with YouTube and and the social networking. The you know, they they've opened up the playing field for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody's now on the same playing field, mm-hmm. right? So the question is still, how do you stand out? If your business card is on a coffee table with a hundred other business cards, what's going to make them pick your card up? Right. Versus, either they're going to pick it up and take it, or they're going to pick it up and put it back down. But What's gonna make them just pick it up? Right. right. You have to stand out. It doesn't matter what everybody attention. else is doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because everybody's got their own audience. Right. Mm-hmm. But just like there's enough money for mm-hmm. it to go around, there's mm-hmm. enough audience to go around. Oh yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I think I think one of the other things with what we're talking about black business, I think I think we don't realize that support is free. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, I, I I I just I was just thinking about this um, because because uh, uh, Dolly Rock passed. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, um, and that was like my big bro, right? And I was thinking about all the things, all the nice things people said about him, mm-hmm. and all the all the things that I'm seeing now, right? And then I think about uh, why did it take us so long to to push that movement to recognize when him. he was the he was definitely the leader of what we were doing, mm-hmm. right? With music and whatnot, and I and I and I just thought about like how how uh, it's the same thing in business, like we don't. For some reason, we won't press share on on our own people. We don't. So we we won't, it, and it's free. Andy, it, it, is, that, is that what it is? I think so. Well, because it depends on who you are. So if you if you just a, a nobody, right, mm-hmm. and you just got like hate in your system, that mm-hmm. that could just be who you are, yeah. right? Um, then there are also people that are nobodies, and when I say nobodies, mean they're just not like major figures that everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some people out there that just if it's good content they'll share it regardless I'm that right guy. now you've also got other people that are will be considered our competition and so you don't want to like it or you don't want to share it because you feel like it's going to take away from you even if you're not ready right. to do what right. that person is doing right. mm-hmm. you're like I don't want to help them right. get any further when I need to help myself right That's but real. but you can do both. You can. You can and both. and I, if you want to be smart, connect. Right. Have to. I think we, we talked about that, right? Well, you've had photographers that we've had some good laughs at that had opportunities to work with you and didn't do right and yeah. came back. And I mean, we've had some we've had, man, we've had some pretty good laughs in business. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But but it's it's the, it's the same. I think I think that's. All of this kind of goes back into, like I said, I think it's just conditioning, man. I can't, I can't be upset that that uh, that anyone else is producing records and getting placements. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm, the, I'm one of those guys that I've helped so many people do things, mm-hmm. right? That now that it's hitting for me, I feel like I deserve it, mm-hmm. right? And so there's a lot of people who are like, well, it's not, it's not your shine. But I think that's the same way with, like, with building any business. I think um, 
as we mature and as we really understand what it takes to really grow our businesses and grow our community, mm -hmm. that ego shit gotta go, bro. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. I feel like it's not always ego. I know in situations where it I've been starts hesitant. As ego. It, no, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying another aspect of when I've been hesitant to share is when I know that person doesn't necessarily have the best business practices. But in those situations, Ooh. I reach out and let them know, like, you got to be consistent. You got to do this. You know what I mean? Because if you want somebody to put, you know, you got to think, I got a reputation too. I want, to, when I share something and I say something is legitimate, I want people to be able to come to you, get good business, and I know it's going to be what it should be. But if the, if that's the, I feel like if that's the reason, mm -hmm. I feel like, as black people, we need to be talking to each other. Because I know there was a black-owned nail salon that I went to her website, and it was just insane. I'm like, where do you even book at? Everything was just ridiculous. I literally just sent her an email like, mm -hmm. hey, sis, I had, you know, like, don't not share it and be like, oh, her stuff is just looking raggedy and not share it well, for that not, reason. But not enough but people, not not enough people are doing that either, though. Right. Because, again, there's that, there's that hate. And a lot of people don't even mean to be hateful, yeah. right? It's uh -oh. just... <laughs> I was gonna say, how is that received? Like, how how did she receive that? You... I didn't get no response, but I mean, I feel like I did my part. Well, I just right. said, you know, it could be, I couldn't figure out where to book at, and it was it was a mess. I'm not gonna lie, but I feel like if so, you don't say nothing, you're still a part of the problem. The person that's not in the right state of mind, real quick, mm -hmm. that's not in the right state of mind of receiving, when you send them that. You're not going to get the response yeah, back. No matter how you say it, right. That's, true. Right. Right. that's the right. problem yeah. with us, though. Yeah. We're not always hating. Right. That's, that's, but, well, that's us. But that's it that has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the lack of confidence in that individual, to or excuse me, the lack of humble humbleness. You know what I'm saying? Because it's humbleness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Propagandarize is a word. So. <laughs> we make up words. Here. We do. We just right? make up words. We here. make up right? words. Not a word. Can propagandarize humbleness. We be politically quick. correct. The rebirth, the rebirth dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't be humble enough to say, you know what, that makes sense. Let me thank you. You know what I mean? I appreciate that's that. It, yeah. Right. So, but that's that that that's like uh, when you don't do your part to help somebody do better right if you're a rapper and you're my friend and you are completely garbage completely i'm sorry i'm gonna tell you i get mad at other people because of the friends that they keep because your friends are not telling you the truth i get upset when i see a chick in the club wearing something she know damn well she should not be wearing and her friends all look better than her and they let her come out the house like that you need new friends we have to hold each other accountable. They don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like as black people, though, we do. We need to get more into a teachable <laughs> mindset. That and be honest. They what? don't want it. Yeah. And, and I think some people are. And I think it just depends on your mindset. Like you said, some people are teachable. Some people are not. Some people take it offensive because it's like, you don't own any businesses. You haven't gotten to where that's I've gotten true. to. That's how can you tell me? Hey, I'm a consumer, though. Mm -hmm. But, and I think that's what they need to look at. If you're speaking from a consumer standpoint, as an owner, you have to hear because that's your consumer. So, you know what I mean? So, um, man, but that rap thing, man, that really touched my soul. I, and I know it did. And that's going to go into a whole nother conversation. So, I want to get back uh, <laughs> on track because there's a lot of people that we can be talking My bad. My about. bad. No, all good. So hey, uh, look, you can invite me back. I we, even, I got more. I yeah, I want. I want to book more. a session. Hey, we we're we're episode three in, and we already got two friends of the show, so we all good. Um, so speaking of being humble, oh man, I'm crying. Um, and then this is the last question that we have as far as business. Mm -hmm. I know that's a this could be a whole topic just for a whole show itself, right? Um, speaking of being humble, how has COVID nineteen affected your business, mm. and how have you adapted? Because I think that's a pretty important question because I know it's affected everybody's business, right? Yeah. So when it first hit, it knocked out about 90% of my income. Because mm. I work with the club stuff and mm. small businesses. Mm. So any other circumstances, short of a pandemic, I can survive. If the world is having, if the, if the, if, if the U.S. is just having a, a bad economy situation, mm -hmm. I can still survive because people still want to be entertained. Thank you, sir. People still want to be entertained. They still got to go buy things. They go to 
stores and and you know the restaurants and and whatnot right. you know so i can always find a way to make money right this is the first time i got scared mm. you know what i mean like scared i'm like i don't know what's gonna happen because i'm seeing people losing their homes mm -hmm. losing their businesses mm -hmm. you know what i mean the difference with me though is i know how to budget my money mm -hmm. right because i don't have a safety net mm -hmm. so i always keep money i put stuff away in the savings for for investing for legal matters whatever the case may be you know and in a time like this i had to reduce the amount of movement i was doing um, because when when you're in a in a hard position like this you can't do everything you've been doing right because you're gonna waste away your bread right mm -hmm. right you know so i've been lucky enough to hold things down and just stand still for a second and during this time of having to stand still i've been back at the drawing board okay things are shifting mm -hmm. we're about to be in a somewhat new way of living because mm -hmm. the COVID is not going to go anywhere right right now they're just trying to figure out how to handle it right 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 i was told by uh somebody at my kid's school district that right now they're trying to figure out if this is going to be a seasonal issue mm. oh, you know what i mean like the flu. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and that and this is not the first covid virus that's been out there this is just the most updated most one recent, yeah and it's still virus. mutating it's still changing. COVID nineteen point five is next. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's still changing. Yeah. <laughs> so so in times like this, it's like okay, as a business owner, you have to really just sit down, mm -hmm. sit still for a second, and think about what's your next move and how to just stay afloat. Not right. to do the most right now. Survival. Right. How do I just survive? this pandemic until things start to open back up you know so i'm still doing graphics i picked up a couple other things you know right, I mean, that right. i started that i started pushing and i'm building and and these are all things that are just adding to my resume hmm. you know so right now i'm just re i'm just solidifying my, my re-solidifying my foundation hmm. so i can hit the ground running right uh, i had a i had a friend that's an esthetician and of course you know been closed down since the beginning and she like curated these self-care at home boxes where basically you could buy sample products mm -hmm. and Smart. you know she started that and i'm like this is something that you could keep doing after, after this mm -hmm. so it, it does make you brainstorm and actually expand because i'm like oh, yeah. that's probably something she wasn't even thinking about doing but this just forced her to really figure yeah. it out the COVID was not the worst thing that happened to us like the future's coming regardless, yeah. right? A lot of things are put, being pushed to online anyway, streaming and so forth, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So like, I got a client out in Silicon Valley that cuts hair at Google, black dude, one of the very few in there, you know what I mean? And he hits me up, was like, look, I got these videos, can you turn these into like a little video flyer for me, an instructional? He's sending these videos to his high-end clients to learn how to do basic haircuts of their own at home mm -hmm. until they're able to come back and see him again mm -hmm. That's smart. and he's making money off of that yeah. mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when you look at where we can we can be we can be so small-minded because we're not taught to expand our our horizon we're not we're, we've got so much tunnel vision not really paying attention to what are all the possibilities yeah right you so go. as you're saying this new stuff you're being forced to do right now yes. you can still continue to do afterwards if you cut hair there's only so many heads you can cut right but you can also cut hair locally and teach people how to cut hair online on youtube show them how to do some dope stuff and learn how to make extra money from there because now you're not getting local money you get international money right, whoever's right. paying attention right. so think yeah. smart work smarter instead of harder this is just uh this is forcing us to teach ourselves how to be better yeah this is a good time for better that. in business yeah, yeah. this is a, yeah. this is a good time if <clears throat> this was a great time kind of for for us with the podcast and because we got to test the market a little bit differently when mm -hmm. everybody's sitting at home and, and we've we've watched um other podcast shows come and go and <laughs> i mean you know i think a lot of so presentation i don't care what you're doing presentation is key for everything mm -hmm. and if your stuff looks like garbage 
and this sounds like garbage. Eventually, preach. that garbage is going to be taken out. <laughs> Come on now, preach. Uh, give him the bell. You know I mean? Give him the bell. Preach. So you so. can only be mad at yourself if you're no longer relevant because you're not doing what it takes. And you may not know what it takes. Right. But yeah. that means you got to research. You got to reach research. out to somebody. You Put know what in I'm the time and the work. You like got you to said. do it. Yo. And it, 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 it really was like, um, like you said, reinventing yourself. And I, I think it, I think for for me I was I was kind of fortunate because I have one of those careers that, you know, you can go do you can engineer from a building with a mask on and you know I can go still do. There are certain jobs yeah. you can have. Yeah. And you can do from anywhere. Yeah. They were session proof. Yeah, they have a they they they'll have a bunch of us teleworking. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But man, I don't know. I just, I don't know, bro. Well, I think I think I think in these times, your motivation will show if you have the drive if you have the mindset just like what we've been saying right i know for me um as a father i don't have a choice it's either i get it or i don't and if i don't you know me and him was talking about this before if i don't it doesn't just affect me Mm -hmm. it affects me Mm -hmm. wife Mm -hmm. children Mm -hmm. and i can't as a man just we talk about ego and pride i pride myself on providing whether Mm -hmm. it's a nine to five or whether it's entrepreneurship um, so whatever I'm doing, I have that drive that whatever it is you're going to put me in front of, I'm going to find a way to make money out of Facts. it because I have to provide. So uh, I know with you, with your COVID, I mean, obviously you're smart enough to. Not my, not my COVID. Uh, with your COVID situation. <laughs> your business. Like, Excuse me. Don't put that on me. Look, look I took that you know, real personal. Not. He said you with your COVID. With your COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> With your COVID situation, <laughs> swaggy. you were smart enough to have an emergency fund because obviously you have other people that are the people uh, depend on are you. depending on you, yeah. right? So with with that in mind, um, Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Yeah, happy Father's Day. Photo, right? photo B. We waiting mm. on you, sir. Y'all can wait. <laughs> waiting on you, sir. Wait. Now is the time. Take Y'all your time, wait. brother. Uh, Thank you. Slow strokes. Thank Now's the time, sir. <laughs> slow strokes. Slow strokes. Pull up game still strong. Oh, oh man. Strong. 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 And remember he was talking about me. Look. <laughs> My <laughs> goodness. Um, I got no kids. It's okay. <laughs> Don't wait too long, man. So well, he's not an eligible bachelor. Uh, so uh, with obviously Father's Day coming up and yes. obviously you being an entrepreneur, um, I know main reason for your motivation is obviously your kids, right? Now. So, now it is. Now. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Got That's got honest, it. right? <laughs> I mean, so I've, I've had this <laughs> this state of mind since I was young. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I actually used to do music back in, like, high school mm-hmm. um, and a little bit into my 20s, you know. And what I it took me a second to realize is that, like, I'm good at a lot of stuff, but what really keeps me going is I love the spotlight. So it doesn't matter what I'm doing, as long as my name is out there. I'm okay. feeling good about it. Hey, bro. Motivation is motivation. Motivation is motivation. Motivation. You got to find it somewhere, right? So, I respect it. He likes spotlight. That's, I like checks. <laughs> hey, but if you stay consistent, the checks is coming. It's checks true. is coming if you're Consistency. That's true. You know what I mean? Plus, it's about being seen. Otherwise, it's like that's, that's why marketing is so important. It's out of sight, out of mind. That's true. If they don't know you exist, you're not going to get those extra customers. That's true. But... Being a father has uh, changed my perspective and given me more reason. At first, I just want to be successful because I feel I'm destined for greatness. I deserve more, so I'm going to go for more. I love that. You know what I mean? But now, even though that still rings true, my children give me reason to push even more on the days I don't feel like doing anything. You know I mean, I, it's been a few times like I love what I do. I love what I do. And that's why I can keep pushing. But when your work, what you do for a living starts to actually feel like work mm-hmm. and less fun, then it starts to it beat you up a little bit at that point. And I've had times where I'm like, man, I just, you know, I'm real close to just saying, let me just get a regular job and just chill out for a minute. Right. Right. And then I go make like a thousand bucks. Right. Never mind. I'm just, gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna stay where we at. You know what I mean? Stay where we That's at. Real. Right. But then I look at my kids. I have four kids. My oldest is 20. My second oldest just turned 18. Um, then I have two little ones that mm-hmm. are turning this year are turning eight and ten. 
So my oldest son just had a daughter. You know, he's doing the family thing right now. Mm-hmm. Man, Swag is a grandpa. Bro. Hey, hey. That's crazy. Hey, G-pop. G-pop. <laughs> G-pop. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we got to clap that out. We got to clap that out. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's a dope feeling, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm a big family man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that helps keep me humble. That keeps me grounded. Mm-hmm. And um, so I teach. You know what I'm saying? I teach. I teach other people the same way I teach my kids. And that's not to be like in any form of disrespect. It's like when you don't know something, mm. that's then somebody's got to teach you. Mm-hmm. You know? So with my 18 year old, he is, uh, so my 20 year old's doing a family thing. My 18 year old just moved out. Mm-hmm. He was ready at 18. Like I've been prepping him for years. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. That's cool. Right. Right. But I told him, this is what I told him. I said, once you hit 18, because he was making money before 18. Mm-hmm. I said, once you hit 18, you got six months. Anybody that comes live with me, you got six months to figure out your life. Mm-hmm. After that, you got to put in. Right? So, and I have my kids 50 50, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that conversation. So I got my kids 50 50. But with him, at 18, he, he, the money he makes, he's a YouTuber. He put down 10 racks on his new Jeep. Mm. You know what nice, I mean? Nice, bro. He makes enough money to live on his own right now. Nice. And he's doing his thing. He's got a couple friends that are also doing YouTube. They're doing a YouTube mm. house. You mm. know what I mean? So they just got a nice spot. Nice. And I made sure his credit was straight, mm-hmm. right? I've been teaching him for the past two years how to manage his money, mm-hmm. how to keep your credit in order. Mm-hmm. He's been using my credit card, making payments on it, it you know, showing him, showing him the process. Um, what I also did, which uh, some people know about, some people don't, but you can put your children on your credit lines, mm-hmm. right? So I took two of my credit cards, one I've had for three years, the other one I've had for four. I made him an authorized user. Mm -hmm. I didn't give him a card of his own. I just made him an authorized user. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after he turned 18, he now has two credit lines, three and four years, Mm -hmm. no missed payments, Mm -hmm. and his credit was 748 at 18. We just talked about this, right? Yeah, last show. You know what I mean? It's important to teach them how to have it and maintain it. And then teach it to somebody else. Yep. Yes. Those are the lessons you don't get in high school. Right. At all. <laughs> right. You don't. So a lot of parents forget we are still teachers. They look to us, right? And as the adults we are, there are a lot of us from from this age range, mm-hmm. from the eighties, that and other seventies. Seventies. <laughs> 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 whose credit is shit. But they don't know anybody because they were never taught mm-hmm. how to do it. Correct. My dad told me, "Don't get a credit card. Cash is king. Cash. The I cash. I didn't home. get my first credit card until I was thirty-three. You see, you know what I mean? And I've did other little things, but mm-hmm. I made I mainly paid everything in cash. But my credit's always been good. It's important to keep it that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad laughed at me. He was like, "You actually listened." I was like, "You said it." put people in debt so I wasn't trying to deal with it right but now that I have a better understanding I'm teaching my son and my daughter and my kids a little differently right you know so they're actually just better prepared there's so many kids right now that are not prepared when they when they when they head out into the real world that's why they still living at home till they 23 24 27 yep 27 how do you bj bj you don't he doesn't live at home but i was just saying <laughs> no i don't <laughs> <laughs> i was like dang he put them all black no i wouldn't say because I, I threw that higher number out there and i was like how old was he again i'm not talking about you yeah, 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 no, yeah. but there are people <laughs> he did say 27 27 right <laughs> like emphasis on it <laughs> right i want to make sure i was being clear i wasn't no, talking that's, about that's bj true, man like this young 29 anyway. 20 26 26 27 man it's it i i couldn't imagine being at home at 20 not doing what I wanted, crazy. But some people are comfortable with that. Nah, man. And well, what about group, e- group economics, though? If you, you know? Group economics, you should still be out by 25. Uh, you know should what? Should be out or should, I mean, because some people, I know people that do have big homes and they all live with their family together. Yeah. I, it, I think it just depends on the end goal. If you're mm-hmm. there without a plan, 
it's a problem. Then it's a problem. But if you're there, so, and this is again a totally, this could be a totally a whole new show on just group economics, family economics. But for my daughter, what I told her was the plan for her was, if you're gonna go to college, stay home, stay home. You can work on the side, focus on your school. You pay me rent, whether it be two hundred, three hundred dollars. I'll save that money up. Put it in an account. When you're done with college, you will already have a down payment for a house. Mm -hmm. And even that is that's teaching. That's, yeah. yeah. And then when you and at 22, 23, whenever you graduate college, buy your house. At 20, if you buy a house at 23, 24, you're set. I did. Because not only, you know, because most people, they'll go in a dorm yep. or they'll go rent at a house outside the college. Money away. You're paying somebody that you don't even know rent. Yep. And most time than not, you take a couple extra years because you're partying, you're doing all yep. this crazy stuff, right? So for her staying at home, you ain't got to worry about food, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Just give me the three hundred, four hundred dollars in rent. Mm -hmm. I'll put it to the side. Four hundred dollars times twelve, right? That's forty eight hundred dollars. Forty eight hundred, five thousand dollars times four. Twenty grand. Tw Twenty grand, down payment for a house, <laughs> and and you're not in debt because you're not staying on campus or you're not, you know, doing yeah. all this other stuff. So I'm putting you ahead of the game. Yeah. But again. There, she might maybe she wants to do something yeah, different i'm yeah. already just instilling like hey this is what as a as a father what i would like to see but, but yeah. if you want to do something different let's sit down if and let's talk about it is solid though mm -hmm. like it is with your daughter right she's going to take sound advice because she gets to see the fruits of success well and it's the goal what right. is the end because right. it's not like i want you to stay home because i want to be overprotective no no no, no. i want you to stay home so that way you're not in debt see, after you're out of college see, you know what i mean that's that's amazing and then I, I think about the people that don't have that or didn't have that because i know right. for me I, i'm not saying that my parents did a great job but they can only teach you what they know mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so as somebody that had to learn a lot of stuff on my own get out the kind of mindsets of my family and mm -hmm generations of people doing the same thing it's kind of like dang i feel so late to the game yeah, you know what i mean you then you, you got right everybody's now? like well yeah you know at <laughs> this point but i'm i'm, I'm 31 but so what? You know, i'm listen, 31 you listen. know what i'm saying so when people are like why you ain't got no kids i just now learned a lot of things that i needed to learn about because my finances. now is the time to have your children well yeah definitely <laughs> but that's what i'm saying when you're set up like that yeah you feel what i'm saying you, you can be on options. a timeline Yo, you know what i'm saying yeah. like that but i'm not gonna just bypass doing these things right. and solidifying it, these things right. to be like but your success story nonetheless regardless oh, of yeah. how mm -hmm. long it, it took you right how many thirty-one year olds do you know flipping a home? Well, but people you know I mean? people do try, people do make you feel bad about that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody ain't have you know, access why, to the same though? information. Why though. do they make you they feel bad? They don't have what you have. That's why you have to. Well, find, I mean, a lot of the people. A lot, yeah, a lot of people have to find an equalizer in your life, mm -hmm. right, to make them feel comfortable about around being around you. Me, I, I I had a cheat code. I mean, my my dad was a real estate broker. Um, my dad, my dad has a crazy story, man. He went from crackhead, went to rehab for a couple years, came back, and he was a real estate broker. Craziest shit I ever seen in my life. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but right? it's but it's inspiration. No, it is. So for me, because I grew up extremely poor, right? And my junior year and my senior year in high school, I got to see what money, and and it wasn't real money, but my well, my dad made a, he made a couple million dollars between, mm. you know junior year and senior for me. You got to see how real so money moves. I got moves. to see how money worked, mm -hmm. right? So for me, my first home purchase was at 19, right? And I, I bought a house for a half a million dollars mm -hmm. at 19. But I was already hip to the real estate game. Mm -hmm. I was around real estate companies, mm -hmm. loan officers, brokers, and my dad had 200, 300 employees, right? So for me, even though my pop didn't have any money to give me, mm -hmm. He gave me all the steps to find a way to make that money. Which is more valuable. Right, which is more right. So he taught me how to fish right. instead of, you know what I mean? So we, we had a relationship set up to where I was I was doing all the real estate for him. Mm -hmm. And then he taught me, he, he sat me with people to do loans. And then he opened up a, a black-owned real estate school. Exposed it to you. Right. So I was exposed. Even though I felt like, for me, it was late because I didn't get to enjoy any of the benefits that my younger brothers and sisters did growing up, mm -hmm. right? Because I moved out as soon as I as soon as I could, right. so they got the benefits of staying home and seeing dad function and really watching that thing grow. Right. But for me, all I knew from junior year was you need to buy a home, and then you need to buy another one, and then you need to buy another one, and you need to buy another one. You know what I mean? So you're right; it really does it come is. from it's where I where I learned how to do finances. I learned a lot of what not to do as a person. Right, yeah. but I had, to, I had to unlearn a lot of stuff, and I'm not saying that, you know, negatively on my parents because they did 
they did what they had to do but that's why i feel like platforms like this are important to me absolutely and and me sharing information that i'm you know i learned late in life you know what i mean i feel like it's very important because we don't all have that listen let let me just clarify something for you um better to be late than not in the game at all oh yeah of course so so don't don't feel any particular way like that i don't embrace embrace what you you know i just wish more people were open to knowing that they have to be taught that come on you yeah. you literally have to be ta- it's just like 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 racism right we're doing a lot of racism these days and there are also people that are very racist because they were taught that mm-hmm. even when they know it's wrong mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there are some people that were taught that and that's just how they are and they still try to be better mm-hmm. right so somebody something or somebody is teaching them to be open even though it's hard to shake their ways mm-hmm. but yeah. yes. but when you want better you just got to take the journey. Well, we're taught to look for certain things, right? Mm-hmm. And we could be looking at the same exact storyline, right? Mm-hmm. And from our perspective is it's racism, police brutality. Mm-hmm. And from their storyline is he probably did something wrong. He's getting what he deserved. Yeah. You understand know what I'm saying? We're All watching this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a different perspective. And so so we. I think the real sign of maturity is what's made us all good business owners is being able to remove ourselves from whatever's happening mm-hmm. and think outside of the box to mm-hmm. see the whole picture. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so speaking about bestowing stuff, and that's, and that's an excellent point, mm-hmm. what was the most important lesson that you believe you've taught to your children? For me, it's, it's respect and responsibility. I, I talk to my children a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing good. I talk to them. I explain to them. Mm-hmm. They're doing bad. Talk to them. I explain to them. <laughs> you know, because understanding is key mm-hmm. in order to do better mm-hmm. and when you have understanding then you can remind yourself thanks you know so mm-hmm. so for me it's like i want all my children to be self-sufficient i say all oh, like i got 12. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you might right you might be nah, working on nah, <laughs> nah. Uh, no, he's alone just, listening to the podcast just, right now just, like she this won't you? Uh, she ready she like, but <laughs> But it's like, I'm proud of my children, you know what I mean? Because I look at other people's kids, and my kids could be so much worse when you look by comparison. The comparative method. You know what I mean? And I, but I tell them that, too. And I, I tell some of the, like, I, my oldest son. Mm-hmm. Not, not my oldest, but my uh, second. He's the YouTuber. He's got, like, 425,000 subscribers, right? He's making money. He travels. Oh, yeah. Sneaker con flies him and a friend out. Mm-hmm. Any event he wants, in or out of the country. You nice. know what I mean? Like, he's doing well. Nice. And I'm trying to teach my other two to follow in similar footsteps because everybody's creative, right? You know, but if we don't guide them, facts, you know what I mean. But but then we teach them to do the same thing. So I tell them, I say, look at your friends. Hell, look at their dads, mm. right? You got a good deal on your hands. Mm-hmm. Facts. I'm a dope dad. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. That's right? Yeah. Look, look, I look, right. I don't look old, rugged. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't, like, right. yeah, I, I don't, you know what I mean? And it's like, and I stay busy, I stay working. My yeah. kids have always seen me working, working, working. My daughter, dad, teach me how to do flyers so I can make money with you. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Don't we have the same conversations with our kids? I, 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 I mean, I, I, same thing. I'm like, yeah. man, you guys got pool tables and air hockey tables, swimming pools. They have none of that going on. Right. We need but, to figure but out it's how to like, maintain that. But we have to teach them how to maintain it. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a it's a lifestyle, yeah. so to speak. But the lifestyle shouldn't be about the things. It should be about how, how you mm-hmm. move throughout your your journey in life. There's certain things you gotta be aware of. There are certain things that you cannot help. Certain yeah. bad things are just gonna happen. So how do you deal with it? What did Jay right? say? Huh? Show them how to move in a room full of vultures. Yep. It's real. Industry shady. It needs to be taken over. So many parents are not teaching their kids how to survive the real world. Facts. They're so busy trying to protect, protect them from mm. it. Yes. But it's like, no, you got to let them experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Within reason. Yeah. You you still set the premises. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But let them experience make, make mistakes. It. You know what I mean? So they can rebound from it. My, my, my daughter, she's half black, half white. And with all this racial stuff going on, she has to see, and we talk, and we watch a lot of shows like 
uh, Chicago PD, Criminal mm-hmm. Minds, stuff mm-hmm. like that, and like watching mm-hmm. things that really happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My uh, my older son, he's he's black and and whatever his mom is, she's mixed with something else. You haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 for him. Hey, bro, that's a real situation. Sometimes it is sometimes. You just don't know, bro. Sometimes you just don't know. Look at that one of mine. Mine. The mixed bag. Right. right? <laughs> Mix uh, black, black ask black your mom. Else, I'm right? black. Ask your mom. Right. Your mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I remember one day he was, uh, him and his friends was at, at the fair, and they, they're like, they were like five of them. They're approached by the cops. Now he's mm-hmm. outspoken like I am. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I've had to learn when to be outspoken mm-hmm. because there was a period of time where I didn't give a shit about nothing. Find me. <laughs> right. Look, I ain't hard to get to. You know what I mean? But because I fear for his life and a time where I know he can be 100% right and still lose. Yes. Mm. That's bars. Oof. You know what I mean? I had to add that. Go so now we, gotta, now we gotta teach him how to move, how to, yeah. how to maneuver. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you, and I told him, you can be 100% right, but you still gotta watch how you talk to that cop. Man. I said, because they feel scared because they don't know what's going to happen again it's the ability to see the whole picture right you know what i mean so you, you can teach him that you know so you could give him my my buddy kwame is going to come up here um his son's 12. Mm-hmm. kwame's from nigeria mm-hmm. okay and remember i was talking to you the other day and i was telling you that they were building the, all these apartment complexes and these homes in nigeria they mm-hmm. all live here mm-hmm. man his son gets to go to africa to nigeria every year an experience. That's, that's an experience. That's, but that's normal life to him. Exposure. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's going to grow up and he's going to be like, yo, I'm just supposed to do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the same thing with like when you read, right? So if you're not able to travel or see the world, if you read, it ex- it expands your mind, mm-hmm. right? It opens up other possibilities mm-hmm. because if you stay in your bubble, like there's people I know that stayed in Sacramento their whole entire life. And they're like, that's all you know because that's all you've seen. Man. You haven't opened up your mind to other possibilities. I think that's what we're saying. Like as yeah. a as yeah. a parent, I think it's your responsibility to open up your child's mind to other possibilities. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, then they're going to follow. Like you said, more more is caught than it is taught. So if you're not, you know, uh, opening up to entrepreneurship, if you're not opening up to ownership, you're not opening up to other avenues to making money, trade school. Mm-hmm. Like it's not mm-hmm. just oh, if you don't go to college, then I'm mm-hmm. going to disown you. No. You show, need to do show something, something but there's multiple different avenues right. to get it. I'm going to give you every single opportunity, and you pick whatever is best for you, and whatever you do, I'll support you. And I think a lot of black parents, not even black parents, parents in general mm-hmm. from not our generation, previous generation, mm-hmm. us, have that mentality. You're doing this. Yep. You're going to school. Mm-hmm. You're doing this. And it's like, did you even ask what I wanted to do? Did you look at my talent? Did you look at my desires? And I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to say one of the things that not enough parents are doing is paying attention. Yeah. We have to pay attention to our children and see what it is that they're into. What do they like? What do they gravitate towards? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. When my my 18-year-old was doing, like, I was trying to teach him. He's, he's a teenager, man. You need to learn these graphics. You need to learn these photos. You need, I'm going to show you how to make some money. Mm-hmm. Right? He was hearing me, but he wasn't hearing me. He wasn't, right. you know what I mean? And then for a while, I think he was 16, he was always in a room, sitting up in the dark, watching YouTube. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Get up and do something with yourself. Call a friend, play a video game, go outside, do something. You know what I'm saying? Do something. And I'm just watching my YouTube, Dad. I'm just watching my YouTube. I'm like, you get on my nerves with that. You know what I mean? And I kept getting on him, kept getting on him, and... I wasn't paying attention. I couldn't see exactly what he was doing, but I wasn't paying attention. He had to tell me what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And what he was doing was he was learning. Mm -hmm. He was teaching himself. He was researching everything his favorite YouTubers were doing, Mm -hmm. right? And when I look at my son now, his work ethic is exactly like mine. We are up late. We don't go to sleep till three, four in the morning. We are on the computer. We are working. We are learning. We are grinding. And that is what he does. And once I seen what he was doing, Mm -hmm. I took a step back and I started paying attention because now he's putting me up on things Mm -hmm. because right now this is their generational thing. YouTube is their their general. We didn't have this. We didn't have the amount of ways to make money like they doing right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 
once he figured out what he wanted to do, I made sure he had all the programs he needed. Mm -hmm. Photoshop, mm -hmm. Final Cut, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? All the good, his, his stuff, showed him the basics so he can learn how to, and he just started branching out from there. Mm -hmm. So the stuff I was trying to teach him earlier on, he he won, he learned to do, but it took him finding what he really wanted to do first. To find a place for it. And to then apply, apply it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Facts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, BJ. Yeah, I want to yeah, photo B. Excuse me. Yeah, that's me. Hi. I know. Uh, ha, did your parents ask you any time sure? growing up what were your passions and did they back you up on it? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Uh, even when I was like in middle school, William? I pretty much told my dad that I want to start a business. William. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ain't doing that. Stop it. <laughs> we definitely ain't doing that. <laughs> we ain't doing that. No. <laughs> no. 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 Sure. no. Sure. I, think, anyway. I think it's a serious Big question. Big Willie Star. Anyway. So you're... So yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, I, like in middle school, I pretty much already like I was in the still that I wanted to start a business, right? Whether it was it was something, right? Never never knew exactly what it was, uh, but when I started doing like theater, my dad was on me about doing that. He wanted me, he, they they backed me up for the most part. Like everything that I wanted oh, to man, do, they were good with as long as long as I was serious and I was actually putting in the work to do. They backed you up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Rare, very rare. Was you, you just gotta yeah. expose. I feel like you have to expose your kids to different things. I feel like. As black people, I love us, but a lot of things that we expose our kid, our kids to early is usually sports. A lot of the time, which can definitely be um, something that is helpful, but I also feel like we need to expose them to, like my niece, she, we took her to a science camp. She's been into that arena the rest of her life because she really liked it. But if you don't even expose them to those different types of things, they they can't even follow what they like because you're only exposing them to the things that you like. I like to do music. I like to do graphics. I like to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're exposing them to those things, but they can't find a niche if they're not exposed to other Multiple stuff too. Things. You That's know true. what I mean? They're going to gravitate to what you put in front of them, but you have to put a variety of stuff in front of them. Yeah. That's how I feel. Or, or match a passion to a, to a, a, to a career. Right. Like right. if you see yeah. them, like, you know, with his son, if he if he's watching YouTube all the time, hey, what about YouTube do you like? What are you, what, what, what gravitates you to watching this so much? Oh, yeah. because I like seeing people film their lives. Okay, well, hey, do you want to do that? Do you want, you know what I mean? I think we didn't get those questions asked for us. Hell so no. majority of the time, we don't even think like that to ask. Hell but now no. that, you know, with the internet and all the conversations we're having, it opens up as a parent's mind. To me, I ask my daughter all the time. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you want to do this? I put her in soccer. She didn't like soccer. Took her out. Yes. Hey, do you want to do this? Yeah, let me try it out. She tried out piano. She's, I don't like piano. Okay, take her out. And it's not, sometimes you got to keep you. them in. <laughs> sometimes you got to keep them in, but I think it's okay to let them try different things until one, if something sticks. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, you finish you just, it out. Yeah. But yeah. You're going to finish, my, you started soccer, you're going to finish out the season, my, but you ain't got to play. My parents yeah. didn't, my, my dad was like, when I started making beats, bro, mm -hmm. my dad was like, cut that off. Right. <laughs> that's not even good. You know what but, I mean? and, but that, and that's the thing. So, again, pay attention to what your children are into. Right? Yeah. Because they'll show you. Yeah. They'll tell you in different ways, totally right? Different ways, so, yeah. so if we look back, like, and if everybody can answer this question, what did you, when you were small, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be an astronaut. Astronaut. <laughs> Sir? Uh... Something to education, pastor, teacher, professor, just to help people. Educator. He would want to be exactly oh. what he is. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He but said okay. I made it. I didn't say podcaster. <laughs> right. Educator still. I, I wanted to, it. honestly, I wanted to be an author. I used to write and illustrate books myself when I was a kid. So mm -hmm. that's what I always wanted to be. Raj? I just wanted to make beats. As a kid? As a kid, bro. Yeah. Because I grew up around, like, um, look at you now. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. My my cousins, my, my cousins and stuff. They they were playing. Even my dad they were playing bass for like Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. So that's all I knew. All I knew was church and music. music. Yep. So that's it. I wanted to be a getaway driver. <laughs> that's the <thing>. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Sounds weird, right? Okay. Look. <laughs> Look, I want to drive fast. Look, I, I want to drive fast. Baby, baby driver. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, I'm like, how we get this money? Right? <laughs> I was, I've always been really big into movies. So I watch a lot of, you know what I'm saying? A lot of heist, a lot of action stuff. And the getaway driver looks like he's having the most fun. Because he's getting away from the cops. Right. Like, Man, let's get up. Right. You know what I mean? And, um. 
obviously. I didn't take yeah. that route. <laughs> <laughs> or you wouldn't be here. You know? He tried. He went to jail. Right? <laughs> He's like, no, nah, I am here. I just drove away. Look. But, but it's like, we all still at least had an idea, right? And even if it's not the exact thing, there's something about that idea that we wanted. Right. There was something we were attracted to. Right, right, right. right? Which true. opens up in some way in things that we do today. Yes. You know? Yeah. What? No, that's, that's facts. What? That's facts. <laughs> Speak, uh, Raj. Everything, everything, everything. He wanted to be a getaway driver. My brother wanted to be a bounty hunter so bad. <laughs> hey, <laughs> because because as a child you're so impressionable. If things look you cool are, to you, then you gravitate to them. Yo, but look, that's my, my brother is Green Beret, and he's and he's a ranger. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. So, so he, it was it was in that realm. He's in the realm. He's still the. He's in the realm. He's like, bro, we could. You know, we can do when we get big, man, we can arrest bad guys without being police. Actually, that doesn't sound like a bad that route. Like <laughs> a bad route. Yeah, hey. He knew, bro. He there knew. So, um, man, this is a this is a really good interview uh, with a lot of different components. Let's go. Let's go. And you just let us go.